half in the bag. I like to eat cheeseburgers. Drive Angry is a movie about Nicolas Cage as a man who escapes from hell somehow to rescue his daughter's daughter from being sacrificed by a cult of Satan worshippers, which sounds like the greatest movie ever made. The operative phrase there was sounds like. Matt Damon plays Matt Damon as a congressman who's running for Senate in the state of New York. He falls in love with a dancer, played by Emily Blunt, and uh, his whole world is thrown upside down when he discovers that there are secret agents running the show of the world. They're adjusting things because they work, they're, uh, they're essentially angels that are working for someone called the chairman, which is alluded to essentially being God. Played by George Burns. Who's played by George Burns. So Battle Los Angeles starred Aaron Eckhart, who the entire film I thought was Richard Dean Anderson. He was the the, he was in the Batman movie. He was in Batman Returns and he played the Joker. Yes. So Aaron Eckhart plays a staff sergeant in the Marines who's getting old and is about to retire. But before he does, he's called up for one last mission, which is to save the world. There are massive casualties in Moscow, Paris. We lost communications with Tokyo, Rio, and New York. If I were to explain the plot, it would just be Marines shoot at aliens for two hours. So moving on to a different type of sci-fi alien invasion movie. We recently discovered a masterpiece mm -hmm. called Galaxy Invader from 1985. Galaxy Invader is the greatest movie you'll ever see. It's a masterpiece of awkwardness. Oh, Mom, everybody knows Dad's a liar and a cheat. Not to mention a drunken bum. So in the movie Paul, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost play a couple of English tourists that are traveling across America to visit all the famous alien hotspots like the Black Mailbox in Area 51. And along the way, they meet a real alien named Paul who's on the run from the government. Sucker Punch tells the story of a baby doll who goes into a mental hospital after she accidentally kills her younger sister by trying to prevent her from being raped by her stepfather. But the stepfather uh, is paying money to have her imprisoned into the hospital so that he can could, he could manipulate the will. And, and Your Highness is a fantasy adventure comedy with magic and wizards and sorcery. It had some good actors in it though. Uh, James Franco and Danny McBride play two brothers that are knights that go on a quest to save James Franco's new bride, who's the damsel in distress, played by Zoe Dachanel. And uh, Natalie Portman's in the film, and she plays kind of like a psychotic, deranged uh, ballerina who's, who's kind of slowly going into madness as her psyche breaks down. And um, that part felt a little weird. It gets kind of disturbing. Um, Are you sure you're not thinking of another Natalie Portman movie? Uh, like a recent Natalie Portman movie? Yeah. Like what? No strings attached with Ashton Kutcher. Oh, right, yes. Hey, sorry I sprayed you guys with those noxious chemicals. Yeah, are, are those gonna give us cancer? Yep. So Samurai Cop, you, see, you saw it, right? I've seen it a hundred times. Really? I can't not watch it, it's very compelling. Wow, okay. I've, I've seen a lot of bad movies in my time. I'm not sure I've ever seen a movie that's so bad. Courtney Cox is of course one of the stars of Scream 4, which takes place 10 years after the original Scream trilogy. And it's about Nev Campbell returning to her hometown where the original Scream massacres took place uh, to promote a book that she wrote about survival. Uh, and while she's there- Wow, this is a really long plot. <laughs> Isn't it about stabbing people? <laughs> For fuck's sake, just get to the review. Whoa, it's a beautiful day and a great day for No Brand Con 2011 here at the Plaza Hotel in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Check out some anime, pick up some manga. Super is the new film by James Gunn that stars Rain Wilson and, um, I forgot her name already. <gasps> Super is the new film by James Gunn that stars Rain Wilson and Emma Page. <gasps> Super is the new film by James Gunn, which stars Rain Wilson and Ellen Page as would-be superheroes. Rain Wilson is a schlubby cook who turns himself into a superhero vigilante in order to save his uh, wife, 
who's played by Liv Tyler, from certain doom in the clutches of the evil drug lord slash pimp, Kevin Bacon. So they made this trailer look like a bunch of people just got together and said, we need to plug in all the appropriate elements into a movie to make dumb people go see it in droves. Yeah, the cliches in it are so laughably bad, but it's so close to reality. It's right on the line there. I could see this being an actual movie, sadly uh, enough. For me, it goes a little too far in the stupid department. How long have you been able to talk? Let's see, today's Tuesday, so, um, always. You're the best zookeeper we ever had! They did hit all the right marks, though. Yes, uh, yes. It's, I can see this being a movie that tons of fat, idiot retards just flock to and enjoy. There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> oh my god! Have you seen Troll 2 before? Um, yes I have. Troll 1 is a movie that came out, I have no idea. Mid 80s. Mid 80s. Yeah. Sonny um, Bono gets turned into a plant in that movie. Yeah. I believe I was at the video store and I saw that there was a Troll 2, and I asked if I could get it, and I watched it, and I'm, I remember vividly thinking, the first 15 minutes, they put the wrong movie in here. So we just saw the movie Thor, which is a Marvel Comics feature uh, starring Chris Hemsworth and Natalie Portman. Um, it's about the mythical figure Thor, the Norse god of thunder, who comes to Earth after being banished from Eternia where he lives in a happy land with his dad and his mom. And uh, he falls in love with Natalie's ass and wants to pound her mound into infinity, which is the general plot of the film. Would you not agree? What movie did you see? So The Hangover 2 is The Hangover again. X-Men First Class, of course, needs no introduction, as most of you have probably seen the other X-Men films or know what the X-Men are, and have probably been waiting to see this film for a while, as I have been. X-Men First Class is essentially a prequel, um, because it takes place before all the other X-Men films, and tells the origin story of Charles Xavier, and how he formed the X-Men, and uh, more importantly, his uh, friendship uh, with Eric Lenscher, who eventually becomes Magneto. Um, which is the focal point of the story. And we just got finished watching Transformers 3, Rise of the Dark Side of the Moon? Revenge of the Dark of the... No, 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 it's Revenge of the Fallen Moon. Revenge of the Moon? R Rise of the Planet of the Revenge of the Moon. No, were you thinking of Rise of the Silver Surfer. Rise, Rise of the Revenge? Rise of the Cobra Revenge is a of movie, the Sith? Right. Rise, it is. That's the, the that's the, uh, the, the, the mask movie. Is there some sort of, like, music album called Rise of the Dark Side of the Moon? No, it's just Dark Side of the Moon. It's by Led Zeppelin. Who? Revenge of the Fallen Silver Surfer? Annie Hall? Oh, right. Transformers 3. Annie Hall. Captain America is Marvel's latest feature-length teaser trailer for the Avengers movie, and it's a World War II era action movie about the origin of Captain America. Mike, what did you think of the movie? Um, I thought it was the origin film of Captain America. I enjoyed the first half of the film, and then I hated the second half of the film. <laughs> so we just saw Cowboys and Aliens, which is the new film from Jon Favreau, the director of Iron Man. Cowboys and Aliens is a genre-bending sci-fi western action-adventure movie that stars Harrison Ford and Daniel Craig. Rise of the Planet of the Apes is a prequel to the successful Planet of the Apes series. This film stars James Franco and a CGI monkey. Well, also science fiction related, we uh, recently attended SciFanCon. Which is a convention in Chicago, Illinois. It's the second year they've done it and it's dedicated to Science fiction, steampunk, comic books, cosplay, steampunk, Star Wars, Star Trek, steampunk, and steampunk. Oh, don't forget steampunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. They also had steampunk there. Hey, we're here at the 2011 Chicago Comic Con. This is uh, Friday, and the Comic Con just started. There's a baby and a thing. Oh, go ahead. We've got two more days of exciting comic book adventures to that. What the f? 
So Fright Night is a movie about a high school kid who discovers that a vampire has moved in next door. Our next film is Conan the Barbarian, a touching coming-of-age tale about a young boy learning to deal with the death of his parents by hitting other people with a giant sword. Over the years, he becomes a man and learns that he doesn't always have to hit people with a giant sword, just most of the time. Drive is a new crime thriller by a Danish filmmaker named this. The movie stars Ryan Gosling and an actress, and it also stars Albert Brooks and Ron Perlman, who is without a comedy beard in this film. And Contagion is Steven Soderbergh's 23rd feature this year, and it's the story of multiple characters across the planet dealing with a worldwide disease that's killing millions and millions of people, thankfully the first one of those being Gwyneth Paltrow. Robot is a big budget Indian film about a scientist that creates a humanoid robot. Over time, the robot develops human emotions and discovers that they may be more than he can handle. Cue the musical numbers. It's, it's essentially about a guy who's a clown. His, his father was a clown in, in the, the Spanish Revolution, the Civil War of 1937. Yes. Um, when, when the Franco regime took over and he's forced to fight in the army briefly, and he, he hacks people up with a knife, and then <laughs> he gets put in a prison. <laughs> then his son breaks him out of prison by blowing a stick of dynamite, and then he gets killed by the Spanish general. Yes, and then specifically by the general's horse. Uh, oh, yes, so he gets trampled, trampled by the him. horse, yeah, and crushes his rib cage, and he spits up blood, and then the little kid pushes the general <laughs> off the horse and the general falls on a spike that goes through his eye. Yes. So that's the backstory. And then um, the movie really starts. And uh, this is not bullshit. We, we really did see this movie, the whole thing from beginning to end, which I know is weird because it's likely that if you watch Half in the Bag, you've never had any interest in seeing this movie or other movies like it. Uh, but Rhoda, what is the plot of What's Your Number? The plot of What's Your Number is Anna Ferris is a young professional who realizes... What? Young professional? No, no, she plays an ignorant slut. Okay. We don't have a DVD play. Black Ninja. Oh. So that, that was Black Ninja. Jack and Jill is theoretically a comedy starring Adam Sandler as both Jack and his obnoxious sister Jill, who get into all sorts of fuck. Ah! Fuck. Ah! Shit. Ah! Whatever. Then someone farts. How did you memorize what the, the tagline on the poster so accurately? And we just saw the girl with the dragon tattoo. That's right, Jay. The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is the new film from David Fincher. It stars Daniel Craig and Rooney Mara, and it's based on a series of books by Swedish author Stieg Larsson. The books have already been made into three films. But yeah, the, the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the Swedish film, that was made in 2009, so it's about time for a remake. Yeah. It's, it's, been t over, it's overdue, actually. I would say this is less of a remake and more of just a, a stealing someone's idea kind of thing to make a film out of this yeah. and bring it to a larger audience and make lots of money. It, it saves all that time of trying to come up with a new idea. Right. So there's that. Oh, I recently saw a film called The Descendants. I have not seen this yet. I want to. I like Alexander Payne a lot. The Descendants was what I call a mom movie, because hmm. um, it's a movie that mom likes or grandma. It's from a book, you know, one of the books that Oprah will say you should read, <laughs> and then mom will read it, and mom will tell other moms about it, hmm. and uh, they'll go see it, and they'll say, that was great, and, and grandma will go, and grandpa will go, and, and it'll smell like church in the theater. <laughs> Um, and we just saw The Devil Inside. That's right, Jay. The Devil Inside is the new scam from director William Something Something. The movie stars actors and was edited on a computer somewhere. 
This movie is the latest film in a series of very low budget films designed to look like real movies and be released in theaters to make a quick buck via a horribly off-kilter budget-to-profit ratio that the general public seems to be stupidly unaware of. These films used to be called direct-to-video, but now they are called first-run features. These films then vanish from the theaters like a rapist leaving the scene of a crime. And we just saw Red Tails. That's right, Jay. Red Tails is the new film from world-renowned entrepreneur and billionaire filmmaker Anthony Hemingway. Red Tails tells the story of Native American fighter pilots in World War I and has been praised by critics for its historical accuracy, memorable characters, and moving dramatic realism. So far, Red Tails has smashed worldwide box office records, even sailing past James Cameron's Avatar, and generally loved by moviegoers and critics alike. How was that for an intro? Well, just like the movie itself, everything was wrong. You racist. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, B-Fest is an event that's held every January in Illinois. It's uh, 24 hours straight of bad movies. That's right, Jay. Every year B-Fest is held at Northwestern University, which is known for its journalism school, its uh, women's lacrosse team, but most importantly for its live <laughs> saw demonstrations. Faith got on stage, she took her pants and her panties off. She laid down on the stage, we put a towel underneath her, then Jim plugged the saw in, he brought her to orgasm right there on stage. <laughs> the name of the sex toy is the fuck saw, okay? <laughs> Chronicle is a film about three high school students who are bestowed with, or rather infected with, whichever way you choose to look at it, a mysterious alien power of telekinesis. The film chronicles the three people as they uh, use and then eventually misuse their new amazing powers. Jay, what did you think of the film? It's worth giving your money to, I guess, a low-budget movie that is trying to, to tell a story with characters and it's, entertain it's, you. It's well worth giving your money to any movie that's trying to just tell a story at this point. Yeah. So on to Ghost Rider. <laughs> Ghost Rider Vengeance of Spirits is the sequel that nobody asked for to the movie that nobody saw. And it tells the story of Terminator 2, but stupider. Cage, as the Ghost Rider, must protect the fate of a little boy who is being groomed to take on the throne of Satan or something. What did you think of Ghost Rider? Spent vengeance of spirits. Spent money on vengeance? <laughs> Silent House is a minimalist horror film starring the lesser known and infinitely more talented Olsen sister Elizabeth. Did you even know there was another Olsen sister until this movie? And they're like lice. They keep appearing in your hair. The film is shot in a style meant to give the audience the illusion that what they're seeing was filmed in one continuous shot and happening in real time. As an afterthought to that gimmick, the filmmakers decided to slap together a story about a girl trapped in a house being tormented by an unknown presence. It was intense. So, Mike, what did you think of Silent House? Silent House, um, it should be retitled Silent Theater. No. Oh. Because everyone was bored. John Carter is based on a series of novels by author Edgar Rice Burroughs and tells the tale of John Carter from Jasum, who travels to Barsoom, meets Tharks, and is entangled in a war to stop Sab Than, the Jeddak of Zadango. But Metai Shang, a Hecador and leader of the Therns, is manipulating Sab Than into conquering the Heliums and into marrying Dejah Thoris, a Jeddak Predic Plog. But Tars Tarkis, Sarkoja, Sola, and Wulu the Kalat are out to stop Sab Than and Matai Shang from crabdangoing the Frango Changs. Plingo Plango bought Thorkis Frango Frang. What? 
Oh, that was the plot. All that stuff you just said? Yeah. You saw the movie, didn't you? The Hunger Games tells the story of an oppressive future society that picks a teen boy and girl from each of the country's districts to fight it out in a battle to the death against each other on live television. One teenager, played by Jennifer Lawrence, volunteers herself for the death match to save her younger sister from having to participate. It's Battle Royale meets The Running Man meets American Idol meets The Truman Show meets THX 1138 meets Gladiator meets Logan's Run meets The Flintstones. Jeff, He Who Lives at Home is the new film from the Duplass brothers, who recently brought us another film called Cyrus, which starred John C. Riley and the fat guy from Lost. Jeff, He Who Lives at Home is yet another film about people learning things and overcoming problems and whatever. The movie stars Ed Helms as Ed Helms and the guy who was in the recent Muppets movie. Can Jeff not live at home? Can Ed Helms not wear a red shirt? Does Susan Sarandon find love in all the wrong places? Do I give a shit? No. With a running time of 82 minutes, this movie felt like it was four fucking hours long. Jay, what did you think of Jeff, <laughs> he who lives at home? Cabin in the Woods is a horror film about a cabin in the woods. Five teenagers decide to vacation at this particular cabin and are soon tormented by evil and killed off one by one. If you think you've seen this premise before, it's because you have. A billion goddamn times. But Cabin in the Woods is well aware of that. As the nightmare unfolds, these kids discover that the threat they're dealing with may run deeper than they originally imagined. Uh, what did you think of Cabin in the Woods? It was pretty good. The Three Stooges is the new film called The Three Stooges. It was made by the Fairley Brothers, who've had a string of hit comedies like There's Something About Mary, So we just saw the Avengers, and I don't think it really needs much of an introduction. Uh, no. I think you all pretty much know the Avengers at this point. Yes, uh, unless you've been living under a rock. Yes, yes, which I have been. Oh, that's not very comfortable. I've tried it before. But yeah, the Avengers is uh, the new Marvel action-adventure superhero movie, and it's uh, written and directed by Joss Whedon. Yes. Of the Buffy the Vampire fame, Firefly... Uh, Dollhouse, etc. Most recently, writing Cabin in the Woods. Yeah, it's yeah. been a Joss Whedon kind of summer already. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's the first big summer blockbuster action movie of the uh, 2012 summer season, and we just saw it on Jay's iPhone. Battleship is the new last big budget movie that Taylor Kitsch will ever be starring in. It tells the story of the brave men and Rihanna who serve aboard the naval destroyer John Paul Jones and how they battle aliens that love to splash around in the water. Dark Shadows is the latest product from Tim Burton and Johnny Depp. Loosely based on some goddamn soap opera from the 1960s, Dark Shadows is about a man who was cursed by a witch and turned into a vampire. After being buried alive for 200 years, he's unearthed in the 1970s to help his descendants revive their fishing company. Oh, that's the plot? Yeah. <sighs> and we just got back from seeing Prometheus. That's right, Jay. Prometheus is the new film from Ridley Scott, which is about aliens, but not necessarily about aliens. Prometheus tells the story about a group of scientists that travel to a distant planet to investigate the origins of mankind because of some mysterious alien clues that they find. When they get there, everything goes well, and there are no problems whatsoever. By the way, did you know that Prometheus had a different title originally? It wasn't always called Prometheus? Mm -mm. What was What was the original title? It was The Girl with the Dragon in Her Cooch. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter is the touching story of a teenaged girl growing up in the turbulent 1960s. She discovers the secrets of life, love, and the magic of bees. Shut up! That's My Boy is the latest comedy from Adam Sandler. That was very good. Yeah. That sum summarizes it quite well. That's what it is. That's all it is. Well, you did use the word comedy. Oh. Uh, you should say, is the latest visual image accompanied with sound from, from Adam, Adam Sandler. Sandler. Yeah, yeah, that would be a little more accurate. Oh, yeah. We don't want to mislead the public. 
Maybe we'll do another take. Let's do another take of that. Yeah. Okay. That's My Boy is the latest comedy from Adam Sandler. You, might, you fucked it up again. Ah, damn it. The Amazing Spider-Man is the new reboot, reimagining, remake thing about Spider-Man, most recently directed by Sam Raimi. This version, however, is directed by some guy named Mark Webb. Who are you talking to? Be quiet, he's doing his intro. Please continue. The Amazing Spider-Man tells the story we've seen already, except this time with a lizard instead of a man in a plastic Halloween mask. The plot was clearly stolen from the 1971 film Zat, as the lizard wants to turn humans into his own kind, for either superiority reasons or lack of an arm complex, or something. Spider-Man must stop him, I guess. And on this episode, we'll be talking about The Dark Knight Rises, which is the third and final film in the very popular series directed by Christopher Nolan. The movie is about Batman and the villainous Bane endlessly punching each other in the face. But it's also about Heath Ledger's dead and is not in the movie. And in preparation for seeing the latest Resident Evil movie, we uh, recently locked ourselves in a tiny room and did a marathon straight through of all four of the original movies. That's right, and we invited our friend Rich Evans to join us. <laughs> Looper is a new film which may or may not be based on something neither of us have ever seen or heard of ever. Like a graphic novel, or a video game, or a book, or some other crap. The movie stars Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt in a mind-bending time travel adventure story about people shooting other people from other times. So Mike, what did you think of Looper? What's Looper? Dread 3D is the new film version of the famed comic book character Judge Dredd, who was last portrayed by Sylvester Stallone in the 1995 film. In this newer and bleaker version, Carl Urban stars alongside a sexy psychic while they battle futuristic drug lords in a futuristic housing project using futuristic weapons. Jay, what the fuck did you think of Judge Dredd 3D? It was good. Are you doing the Judge Dredd voice? Yeah. They call me Judge Frowny Face. Oh, what are you trying to say? In Sinister, Ethan Hawke plays a true crime novelist that unnecessarily moves his entire family into the home of a recent mass murder to try and write a book about the unsolved crime. It turns out that not only this murder, but a series of murders dating back centuries are the evil work of a demonic creature called Bagool, played by a former member of the band Slipknot. Despite your first impressions based on the fact that the movie's villain is named Bagul, the movie is, in fact, not a comedy. Paranormal Activity 4 is the new Paranormal Activity movie. It's about 90 minutes long and features actors pretending to be other people in a fictional setting called a movie. In this movie, something haunts people, and then things happen. The scariest of which is the fact that people actually paid money to see this movie. Skyfall is the 37th James Bond film in the Bond franchise. It stars Pierce Brosnan and Richard Burton. Skyfall is the 47th James Bond film. Skyfall is the 67th James Bond film. Skyfall is the 116th Daniel Craig film in the series of very successful spy films about a character named Daniel Craig. The film stars James Bond and Javier Bardem. Skyfall is the 568th James Bond film in a series of comical films for children. And we just saw Twilight Breaking Dawn Part 2. In preparation for seeing the new Twilight movie, we did uh, absolutely nothing. The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey is the first film in a new trilogy of films from director Peter Jackson. Now you've probably seen the Lord of the Rings films unless you've been living under a rock, but The Hobbit is based on an earlier, shorter book written by legendary author J.K. Rowling. This makes The Hobbit technically a prequel and thus pointless. Follow the adventures of Bilbo Baggins and a group of dwarves as they attempt to reclaim their dwarven kingdom from the clutches of an evil dragon named Smog. Jay, what did you think of The Hobbit, an unexpected flop? Django Unchained is the latest movie from auteur filmmaker and foot fetishist Quentin Tarantino. 
The film takes place two years before the start of the Civil War and stars Jamie Foxx as a slave that teams up with Christoph Waltz to rescue Foxx's wife from an evil plantation owner played by Critters 3 star Leonardo DiCaprio. The film is most notable for its incredibly historically accurate depiction of slave-era life in the South. The Last Stand is a new action film starring an old, leather-skinned corpse. The premise is simple. A small-town sheriff and a few of his officers are the last chance to stop a dangerous drug cartel guy from escaping across the border and back into Mexico. The moral of the story? Stay true to your convictions, revenge is always okay, and shoot guns everywhere. Why not? A Haunted House is another one of those spoof movies. You know, those. <laughs> it's made by Marlon Wayans. You know, him. <laughs> he makes those spoof movies. This is another one of them. You and your ghost balls! I got some for you! Thankfully, they no longer shoot these movies on real film, or else we'd have to lament the waste of precious film stock on this piece of garbage. The only precious resource wasted was people's time, energy, effort, money, and reputations. A Good Day to Die Hard, Another Good Day to Die is the fifth film in the successful Die Hard film series. Bruce Willis reprises his role as Detective Die Hard Man, the man who cannot be injured by anything or anyone. This is also the third film in the Die Hard series where Willis has had a co-star. First there was the black guy, then there was the Mac guy, now there's a guy. Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters is a modern twist on the classic fairy tale about a brother and sister that escape the clutches of an evil witch by burning her alive. In this new version, Hansel and Gretel grow up to become blandly attractive drifters that burn witches alive somewhat frequently. When a small town's children are captured by witches, they hire Hansel and Gretel to do just that. But along the way, they discover secrets about their pasts, and then some people explode, and then rock music plays over the end credits. Jack the Giant Slayer is the new action-packed film which is based on the old folklore Jack and the Beanstalk. The movie stars Nicholas Holt as Jack, and Ewan McGregor as a knight or something. Like other films in this current Hollywood trend, Jack the Giant Slayer takes a simple fairy tale and injects it with violent steroids and special effects. Oz the Great and Powerful is a prequel to the classic 1939 MGM musical The Wizard of Oz. Or maybe it's just an adaptation of another one of the L. Frank Baum 13 Wizard of Oz books. I don't know, it's something. Whatever, you've heard the name Oz, so here's another movie about it. In this film, we see how a phony magician traveling through Kansas gets whisked away to the magical land that shares his name, and how he eventually becomes the Wizard of Oz we've all come to know. In order to take his place as the new king of this magical land, Oz must first defeat the evil Wicked Witch and her army of flying baboons. Will Oz defeat the Wicked Witch? Will he fall in love with Mila Kunis or Michelle Williams? How close can a studio get to infringing on Warner Brothers' copyright? All these questions and more are answered in Oz, the not-so-great and not-so-powerful. Evil Dead is a remake of The Evil Dead. Mike, what did you think of Evil Dead? Oblivion is a new science fiction film from visionary director, some guy who made Tron 2. In the film, Tom Cruise plays a guy who repairs things on Earth, after it's been destroyed by an evil alien force. Who's gonna repair his marriage? Oh. Oblivion is the Matrix meets Total Recall meets Independence Day meets Wally -E, meets Planet of the Apes meets the Fockers. The Lords of Salem is the newest horror picture from director Rob Johnson. Rob Zombie. Why would he? <laughs> In the film, an ancient curse is revived in the town of Salem, bringing back witches and their evil plot to conjure up the son of Satan. It's a movie featuring weird visuals, bad acting, and uncomfortable nudity. The movie's runtime is approximately 100 minutes, and it contains a plot. Iron Man 3 is the first post-Avengers film in the Marvel Films universe. 
It stars Robert Downey Jr. as an overpaid actor inside of a tin can suit who fights evildoers as the superhero Iron Man 3. His enemies this time include Guy Pearce as an old acquaintance with a grudge, Ben Kingsley as an old man with a beard, and Shane Black as an old school Hollywood screenwriter with an over-reliance on witty dialogue. Pain and Gain is the Hi, latest like film from critically acclaimed filmmaker Michael yeah. Bay. I, d I'm doing the, the intro. What? I'm trying to do the intro. Intro to what? Pain and Gain. Oh, fuck, does it even need an intro? Most of the movie is in focus, and Ed Harris shows up for a little while to remind the audience what it's like to have feelings towards something on screen other than pure hate and depression. Star Trek The Fast and the Furious is the second film in the newly rebooted franchise by J.J. Abrams. The movie is essentially the same film as the first one. Kirk learns to be a leader, Spock gets emotional, Uhura and Spock have a lover's quarrel, and some guy wants revenge. Things also blow up, but this time things are more blow up y. The Hangover 3 is the third Hangover film in name only, mainly because this film inexplicably has the plot of an 80s heist movie. The film stars our old friends from the Wolf Pack. Zach Galifianakis, Ed Helmsley, Bradley Cooper, and Kim Jong Lil Penis. I love cocaine! This time around, the Wolf Pack is looking for Chow and a bunch of stolen gold that belongs to Marshall, a villainous kingpin character played by John Goodman. A man we can all agree is a decade late on a massive heart attack. You okay over there? Laxative! After Earth takes place 1,000 years after our planet has been destroyed. In the film, Will Smith plays Cypher Rage, and his wife Jaden Smith plays his son, Kitai Rage. The two crash land on the desolate planet, injuring Cypher to the point of being immobile, which means it's entirely up to Kitan, Kitar, Kitai, to travel across the dangerous landscape to retrieve their spaceship's distress beacon which leads to lots of exciting scenes of a kid walking around in the woods. Eventually, because things have to happen in a movie, Katai fights the Cloverfield monster. The Man of Steel is the new reboot of a remake to a sequel of Superman. It stars Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, a 7-Eleven logo, and Kevin Costner as a Sears logo. In this film, Superman punches a bunch of energy while Metropolis is destroyed and all of its citizens die except for Lawrence Fishburne and a secretary. General Zod also wants the Kodak to save Krypton. <laughs> White House Down is the new film from acclaimed director Roland Emmerich, the cinematic genius behind such films as The Patriot, Independence Day, Godzilla, The Day After Tomorrow, and 2012, one of my personal favorites. In this film, Magic Mike and Jamie Foxx pretend to be characters in a movie that is about as plausible as a Roland Emmerich film. Jamie Foxx plays President James Washington, the President of the United States. The White House gets blowed up, and Magic Mike protects him by shooting the bad guys with his gun. Also, his little daughter is in danger and he wants to prove that he's a good father. Has this plot been done before? I don't think so. Thanks, Roland Emmerich. I hope someone shoves a club up your ass. <laughs> the Lone Ranger is the new film from a bunch of people who got together and said, let's make an old idea new again, put Johnny Depp in it, and laugh all the way to the bank. These people are now unemployed. The film stars Arm and Hammer as the Lone Ranger, and Johnny Depp as another one of his eccentric characters who wears a stupid hat. Grown Ups 2 is the highly anticipated sequel to the 2010 Adam Sandler hit comedy Grown Ups 1. The film follows four funny guys as they reconnect with their past. Open the window. Why don't you open it, you... Adam Sandler's funny, bro. I want to get chocolate wasted. Stop thinking, brain. You're going to hurt yourself. Fork in the brain. 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 Ha ha ha. 
Ha ha ha, happy Gilmore. It's a uh, golf ball, huh? Blender in my brain. I am a flyover cow. Pacific Rim is the latest film from visionary fantasy and horror filmmaker Guillermo del Toro. The story takes place in a futuristic world that's been ravaged by giant Godzilla monsters that travel to our world through a magical portal at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. To stop these violent creatures, humans decide to watch the movie Robot Jocks and tons of anime to get a few ideas. What follows is lots of punching, destruction, horrible fake foreign accents, and unnecessary close-ups of Ron Perlman's face. Wolverine, or The Wolverine, is the second attempt to make a movie just about Wolverine. Except for the first three X-Men movies. Oh, snap. Oh, no, you didn't. You ain't all that and a bag of potato chips. Wasn't there a critic that said that the first Wolverine movie was all that and a bag of potato chips? Now I could go on and on about this film because it was indeed all that and a bag of potato chips. In this movie, Logan travels to Japan to say goodbye to a Japanese man his character wouldn't care less about saying goodbye to. While he's there, he discovers some kind of sinister plot about something. Action happens, romance happens, there's fighting and shooting, and then all is resolved at the end, when Wolverine throws a giant robot off a cliff. So Things is probably one of the worst movies ever made, uh, would you agree? Um, I would remove probably. Okay, it's definitely the worst movie that has ever been made. Uh, you don't really watch it, uh, you don't really view it as a movie so much as an object. It's just a thing that you can say, well now I've seen that. <laughs> He's ADRing over him and you can still hear his old audio? That's a thing that happens? <laughs> Gravity is the new film starring Sandra Bullock and George Clooney. It was directed by some foreign guy I've never heard of, so it must be good, right? Gravity tells the story of U.S. astronauts aboard the space shuttle who encounter space debris and everything gets destroyed. It's a struggle for survival as Clooney and Sandra Bullock try to f survive floating around in orbit in their space boots. So far, Gravity has had astronomical success at the box office, which isn't a surprise because it's a great film, but it also has two of the biggest stars in the universe. In this guy's opinion, Gravity has relaunched Sandra Bullock's career. In fact, Gravity is so good It'll keep you in your seat the whole movie. Are you okay? What? What was that? What do you mean? Carrie is a 1976 horror film directed by Brian De Palma. It's based on a novel by Stephen King and stars Sissy Spacek in the titular role, an awkward high schooler who discovers that she has telekinetic powers. What did you say about tits? Despite the resistance of her overbearing, abusive mother, Carrie decides to attend her high school prom, but once there, a mean prank played on her by Nancy Allen and John Travolta pushes her over the edge. Also, they just remade it. Ender's Game is based on the book by Orson Scott Card, who probably hates the director of this film almost as much as he hates the gays. The film is about little kids being trained and recruited into the military for some reason to prepare for a forthcoming battle with giant alien bugs. Our main character, Ender, is the chosen one who will lead our world to victory because science fiction trope. Mike, what did you think of Ender's Game? Well, Jay, I couldn't wait for this film to end -er. I'm the first. In the film, Thor battles the alien from Prometheus, who returns with the black goo and is up to some wacky mischief. The alien elf wants to shoot his black goo through the nine realms as all of the holes converge in the sky above Stellan Skarsgård's house. Natalie Portman's stand-in is also in the film, and she sleeps the whole movie inside a time-traveling boat while pretending to have some sort of disease problem with her because black goo is in her eyes. <laughs> Thor 2 has some enjoyable moments, but with a plot that's so schizophrenic, you'll need to take some Thorazine to understand what's going on. What? 
The Hobbit, The Desolation of the Smaug, is the second part of a new trilogy of Middle-earth films from the original Lord of the Rings director Peter Jackson. In this film, a dwarf named Thorin has to retrieve the Arik Stone from an evil fire-breathing dragon named Smaug. Another dwarf named Keeley is falling for an elf named Kate from Lost, but the archer elf Legolas also has feelings for Kate from Lost. Meanwhile, Gandalf must separate from the pack of dwarfs to figure out the mystery of the necromancer. There's also a hobbit in there somewhere who mostly just stands around and watches things happen. The Wolf of Wall Street stars Leonardo DiCaprio as real-life Wall Street a-hole Jordan Belfort. Hey everybody, Jordan Belfort here, author of The Wolf of Wall Street and creator of The Straight Line System. The film is described as a biography crime comedy, and it delivers all that and a bag of chips under the masterful direction of Martin Scorsese. Was that, was that sarcasm? No, actually this time it wasn't. Oh my God. Believe it or not, it was not sarcasm. What did you think of uh, The Wolf of Wall Street, Money Never Sleeps? <laughs> uh, I thought this movie was great because it featured the, the most realistic depiction of a gay orgy that I've ever seen. You've been to many? I've seen a lot. I mean, I've never been to a gay orgy before. What? Why is there te floating text that says confirmed for gay? Oh my god. The Legend of Hercules is the new film by veteran director Rennie Harlan. It stars many other people playing different roles. All of these statements are true. Hercules must use all of his mighty strength to rip off Gladiator, 300, as well as many other films. Does Hercules have the strength to defeat his enemies and save the day? Well, with a Rotten Tomatoes score of 3%, I would say no. Her is the latest quirky movie from that oddball filmmaker Spike Jones. In this one, Joaquin Phoenix plays an eccentric weirdo whose life gets turned upside down when, get this, he falls in love with his computer. Where will this unconventional love story go, and what will his friends and co-workers think of his wacky but heartfelt romance? What the hell was that? Uh, so the Robocop, the remake, is the new film by Pablo something, and it stars uh, two guys from cop shows. The guy who played Robocop it was on a series called The Killing, and the guy who played um, the partner uh, was on uh, NYPD Blue or uh, NCIS or, oh no, he was on... <laughs> Um, <laughs> my Petey Blue's like 20 years old. Cheap Thrills is a new black comedy starring Pat Healy, Ethan Embry, and David Koechner. The IMDb plot keywords for this film include money, bar, poop, dog killed, human excrement, defecating, vomit, cocaine, murder, sex scene, and eating one's finger. This essentially sums up the entire film with barely any other substance. Jay, what did you think of Cheap Thrills and why did you have me watch this film? <laughs> <laughs> the Grand Budapest Hotel is the latest film from acclaimed filmmaker Wes Anderson. It stars Ray Fiennes and pretty much everyone else that you've ever seen in another Wes Anderson movie. Hey, remember that movie, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty? What a hit! What does that have to do with Grand Budapest Hotel? I don't know. I just thought of it right now. The Grand Budapest Hotel, or hashtag GBH on Twitter, is about the adventures and exploits of concierge Gustav H, played by Fines, and a wacky murder mystery caper. Anderson succeeds in finding that last genre on earth to hipsterize, the obscure works of German author Stefan Zweig. Captain America the Winter Soldier is another Marvel movie. And it's a sequel to the first Captain America movie. Oh shit, this fucking room is spinning. This one is about Captain America and a huge plot involving a shield or hydrants or massive explosions and violence. Can Aaron Rodgers beat up the man with the iron arm? Can he uncover the mystery of the plot? Does it matter? I don't know. It's a fuck away from me. So Transcendence is uh, about Johnny Depp as the lawnmower man, and, uh... <laughs> the Amazing Spider-Man 2 is directed by Mark Webb, who also directed The Amazing Spider-Man. This one also stars Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man, and Emma Stone as Gwen Stacy. Again, it also has Dolly 
Parton as Aunt May or whatever. The movie also has bad guys and fights and themes of family and revenge and love and heroism. Eventually, the movie ends. The Amazing Spider-Man is an experimental film designed to test the effects of an experimental moving plotline on the human brain. <laughs> Summer movie season is officially on, and you know what that means. It's time for another attempt at an American Godzilla movie. This one is in the more capable hands of some guy who made another movie, instead of Roland Demmerich, who's never made a real movie. This Godzilla is pretty much what you'd expect. It stars people who are involved with the plot. X-Men Days of Future Past marks the return of director Brian Singer, a man who was recently accused of making two really good X-Men movies. In this fifth X-Men film, Wolverine travels back in time to stop a midget from making tall things. All the important X-Men characters are in it as Wolverine attempts to fix a future that really sucks for everyone. Except for dangerous tall things, and maybe the company that manufactures badass alternate future body armor and maybe Ian McKellen, because he's still alive. A Million Ways to Die in the West is terrible. It stars a man who loves himself way too much, Charlize Theron, Liam Neeson, and Amanda Seafood. Considering this was a Wild West film, it's ironic that we had more fun watching the tumbleweed rolling by us in the empty theater. Hey, that was a joke, McFarlane. That's how that's done. What was the joke? The new film, Deliver Us From Evil, which is not to be confused with Deliver Us From Evil, Deliver Us From Evil, Deliver Us From Evil, Deliver Us From Evil, or Deliver Us From Eva, is based on real life New York police detective Ralph Sarchi and his adventures in exorcism. The film is based on Sarchi's 2001 book called Beware the Night, which has nothing to do with the film at all. Sinister director Scott Derrickson helms the film, which stars Eric Bana and Aaron Rodgers' current girlfriend. Tom Cruise stars in The Edge of Tomorrow, which tomorrow will be on the edge of leaving theaters. In the film, the real-life insane closeted gay cultist stars as Nicolas Cage, a man who inherits the power to repeat the same day over and over again after being killed by a special type of alien. Will Tom Cruise save the human race again? Will he do it again in his next film? What will satisfy his massive ego? Tom, movies aren't real. You're just a fraud actor. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes takes place 10 years after the events of Rise of the Planet of the Apes, in a post-apocalyptic, thankfully James Franco-less world where highly intelligent apes live in the woods and moderately intelligent humans live in a moss-covered backlot. A series of wacky misunderstandings leads the two camps to wage war on each other. Mike, what did you think of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes? Hated it. Monkeys looked fake. It sucked. Thanks for watching. After stealing a mysterious orb in the far reaches of outer space, Peter Quill, a half-human, half-alien, is now the main target of a manhunt led by the villain known as Ronan the Accuser. To help fight Ronan and his team and save the galaxy from his power, Quill creates a team known as the Boyhood to save the world. Mike, what did you think of Boyhood? Well, Jay, before I get into how much Boyhood sucked... Filmed over 12 years with the same cast, James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy is a groundbreaking story of growing up as seen through the eyes of a child named Star-Lord, who literally grows up on screen before our eyes. Well, Jay, what did you think of Guardians of the Galaxy? Do you think when, when Disney was saying who should we get to direct our next big Marvel blockbuster? They said, I know, let's get that guy who made that movie where Ellen Page rapes Rain Wilson. <laughs> Into the Storm is a new tornado horror movie starring no one you've ever heard of. A barrage of visual effects, wind machines, and bad dialogue bring the terror to the big screen. But what is really terrifying are the people in the theater sitting next to you. When people become so fucking fat they no longer retain the shape of a human, you know they've eaten too much popcorn. Have you seen these people? Can they chew with their mouths closed for Christ's sake? Shit, it's louder than the movie. 
And this is a movie about loud ass tornadoes. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are back. Only this time they're CGI instead of rubber costumes. Although technically they were CGI last time, but that was completely CGI. Uh, and they were also a cartoon at one point as well. Multiple times they've been a cartoon. And a comic book too. They've and a been comic book. Every form of media. And, and uh, toys, many, many toys. They've been toys, but they're back. This time they do some things on screen and fight Shredder and try to stop someone from releasing gas onto the city or whatever. And then the movie ends, I think. Ben Affleck tries to not have the charge of murder stick in David Fincher's new film, Goo Gone. In the film, which is based on the popular book by Gillian Flynn, Ben Affleck is accused of murdering his wife, played by some lady. A bunch of crazy shit then happens, which can't be described without giving too much of the movie away. Tyler Perry is also in the movie, and so is Ben Affleck's penis, which is played by Matt Damon. Annabelle is a prequel to a small element of The Conjuring, that element being a creepy doll that looks like something that belongs in a horror movie that no one would ever want to own, ever. The movie then happens. It stars no one you've ever heard of except for Alfre Woodard, who is in Star Trek First Contact. Mike wrote this. The movie is about 90 minutes long, then it ends. In the middle of the film, scary events happen, like seeing Ben Affleck's penis. Oh wait, that's the other film. <laughs> Great. <laughs> the cast of Ocean's Eleven reunites in Christopher Nolan's new film, Interstellar. In Interstellar, Matthew McConaughey plays Cooper, a space pilot who is also a post-apocalyptic corn farmer. He lives on a dusty farm with his ungrateful daughter, dim-witted son, and Jonathan Lithgow. When offered a chance to go to space to get away from his family on a suicide mission, Cooper jumps at the chance. Their mission? To find a new planet for Anne Hathaway to overact on. <laughs> In Nightcrawler, Jake Gyllenhaal stars as a psychopath who videotapes accidents, crimes, and people without their permission. No, he doesn't work for TMZ. He does this all on his own overnight in the seedy, disgusting cesspool that is Los Angeles. Jake sells his gory and horrific footage to news stations and is determined to get ahead of his competition at all costs. And his competition is Bill Paxton, so it's not too difficult. 10 milligrams? What do you think that is? I don't know, I just take all of them. Birdman stars the guy who played Mr. Mom as Regan, a washed up Hollywood actor looking to revive his career and his self-worth by writing and directing a Broadway play. After the play bombs on opening night, a space meteor gives Regan the real powers of the fictional Birdman character, and he fights to save the world from an evil entity known as Mugutu, winning back the love of his estranged wife and daughter. A giant laser beam gets shot into New York City as well. Peter Jackson's The Hobbit series is back, but sadly the Denny's Hobbit menu is not. I wanted to fill my hobbit hole. In this third installment called The Battle of the Five Armies, four armies fight each other to get into a mountain filled with gold. A bunch of strange things happen, involving ghosts and laser beams. Then there is a bunch of fighting, and then there isn't. Frodo Baggins then returns to the Shire, the only place in the world he feels safe and at home, only to find out that his neighbors have declared him dead and robbed him. You ready to talk about the Hobbit's battle? <laughs> Inherent Vice is the latest film from acclaimed filmmaker Paul Thomas Anderson. It stars Joaquin Phoenix as a hippie private investigator in Los Angeles, trying to solve the mystery of what this film's plot is. Jupiter Ascending is the newest film from the Wachowskis, the siblings that brought you such hit films as The Matrix and... And let me tell you, only the Wachowskis could take such a perfect idea like mixing the harvesting of the human race with Cinderella and fuck it up so badly.
Jupiter Ascending stars Channing Tatum as Strange Magic Mike, a half-man, half-werewolf with wings who has rocket boots and a Gungan electro shield. Mila Kunis reprises her role from Ted as a girl who says dialogue terribly and looks like she has no idea what's going on. Together, a bunch of cartoon aliens, giant winged lizards, robots, and men who whisper want Kunis to sign contracts or to marry them or to do something so that someone can turn the human race into genetic goo so that they can fill up their fountains of youth for rich, aristocratic white people. Chappie is the latest film from Neil Blomkamp, the director of District 9. His previous film was Elysium, from the director of District 9. His next film is Alien 5, from the director of District 9. Do you remember District 9? Do you remember how good that movie was? District 9. Chappie follows the adventures of a lovable robotic police officer that's implanted with artificial intelligence. He learns what it means to be human by watching cartoons and violently pummeling people within an inch of their life. Hugh Jackman plays a bad guy that builds a bigger, bulkier robot because the movie needs a climax. Sigourney Weaver is also in the film to deliver lines. It Follows is a new horror film from Robert David Mitchell. Or David Robert Mitchell? Ro David Robert David Mitchell. Robert, a guy who directed something else. The film takes place in Detroit, and if that's not scary enough, if you're a teen who has premarital sex, an invisible person that only you can see will slowly walk towards you. Sound scary? Believe it or not, it was. James Wan directs his scariest film yet, The Fast and the Furious 7, or as it's also known, Furious 7. In this probably not last installment, the gang is all back to fight some group that wants to get a device that can see everyone's phones or something. Jason Statham is another bad guy who wants revenge on our heroes for injuring his brother. An event I can only assume happened in the last film, since I haven't seen any of these films. Vin Diesel's house explodes, and then a lot of action happens. Then the movie ends. Unfriended is a new Skype and Facebook-themed horror movie. Not to be confused with the recent Twitter-themed horror movie, It Follows. In Unfriended, five or six teens all meet on Skype to be horrible people on the anniversary of their friend's suicide. A suicide they caused by cyberbullying her after they posted a video of her shitting herself while drunk. Come on, people, we've all been there. Eventually, through computer hijinks, every character dies. Oh, spoilers. Mike, what did you think of Unfriended? What? Kevin James continues to astonish audiences in his new film, Paul Blarp, Mall Blarp 2. And no, it's not his comedic skills or his writing. It's his ability to continue to be the most shameless, embarrassing sellout who's ever lived. In Paul Blart, Mall Blarp 2, we learn that Sony has their own Apple iWatch. We also learn that the Wynn Resort in Las Vegas has a great looking pool area. Nice restaurants, a very helpful staff, and a fantastic looking stage show called La Rev. They also have a world-class art collection that no one seems to care much about that criminals can easily steal with cheap plastic gadgets from Sharper Image. Oh yeah, and Paul Blart falls down a lot, and his 45-year-old hairdresser daughter gets kidnapped by the guy from Star Trek First Contact. The film carries on in the Adam Sandler tradition of social class mocking, homophobia, racism, and stupidity, but in a much more PG manner. Jay? What did you think of Paul Blar, Mar, Blar, Blar, Blar? The 2015 summer movie season kicks off with Disney's Marvel's The Avengers 2 Age of Ultron. That's right, man children. It's that time of every other year when the Avengers assemble to fight something, smash buildings, and learn the important lesson of teamwork. In this second film, Iron Man makes an AI crazy person called Ultron. Ultron wants to kill all life on planet Earth. His counterpart is a man with red skin who lives in a metal box. His name is the Seer, or the Watcher, or the Knower, or something. He shoots at Ultron with a laser crystal on his forehead. 
and other characters have some development. The film ends eventually. Tom Brady stars as Mad Max in the director of Happy Feet's new film, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, did I say Tom Brady? I meant Tom Hardy. If it was Tom Brady, that road warrior wouldn't have enough air in his tires. <laughs> In this new film, Mad Max sort of helps a bunch of women escape from a white Darth Vader. Watch this movie. Or you could watch Paul Blart Mall Cop 2. Forget Disney's Marvel's The Avengers 2. This summer movie season has officially begun with Jurassic World. From the director of Safety Not Guaranteed, you know who I'm talking about, America's sweetheart, Colin Trevorrow. Smile, though your heart is aching. In Jurassic World, Chris Pratt plays a genetically modified super soldier who has been sent in with a team of Navy SEALs to fight a group of cyborg T-Rexes. Soon the SEAL team finds out that a group of raptors, led by a raptor named Ivan, who has the human brain of an ex-Soviet spy, have taken over the White House. So, in a daring move, the Navy SEAL team, led by Pratt's character Owen Thunderguns, must convince a group of T-Rexes to come back with them to Washington to fight the Raptors and save America. Owen must also learn to reconnect with his distant son and fall back in love with his estranged wife, who works in the White House. Terminator The Age of Ultron will only be in theaters for about a week, so see it while you can. That is, before Joe Dirt 2 knocks it out of its ninth place in the box office. Joe Dirt 2 isn't even being released in theaters, it's a Netflix movie. Terminator fans rejoice! Arnold is back in the iconic role that made him famous, The Terminator. Oh wait, I guess he was also back in Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. So he's back, again! Wow, he really meant it when he said, I'll be getting divorced for fucking my elderly Puerto Rican cleaning lady. In this new film, Arnold plays old Terminator, who was sent back in time to protect a nine-year-old Sarah Connor for some reason. But not before the other Terminator was sent back in time. But not before Kyle Reese, a Chinese T-1000, and a dog named Einstein were also sent back in time. In this alternate timeline, Sarah Connor, played by someone terrible, is driving around with guns her whole life, waiting for action scenes to happen. Then Kyle Reese shows up, and together, everyone pointlessly shoots guns at a guy who's made of some kind of digital metal or something. Ant-Man is the latest Marvel movie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Marvel Films. It stars Paul Rudd as Ant-Man, a Marvel superhero ripped right from the pages of a Marvel comic book. In the Marvel film, Ant-Man is hired by a former Ant-Man to break into a building to steal a bad Ant-Man suit, which will most definitely not eventually be worn by an evil businessman. Original director Edgar Wright left the project when Marvel wanted to stifle his creativity and create connections within the film to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He was replaced by Peyton Reed, who ironically directed a film called Yes Man. <laughs> Pixels is the new Adam Sandler comedy, uh, Adam Sandler film. Starring Adam Sandler. Uh, and Kevin James, and some lady, and Peter Dinklage. Her and name's jo Michelle Moynihan. Michelle Moynihan and Josh Gad. And uh, everyone phones in their performance except for Brian Cox, who somehow is a professional still. Director Josh Tank brings us a new sci-fi horror film called Fantastic Four. In this new reboot from Nightmare World Films, I mean Marvel, Miles Teller stars as Stretch Armstrong, a man made of rubber for no reason at all. And as a kid, he starts building a teleportation machine for no reason at all. Then as a slightly older kid, he builds a bigger teleportation machine, and all of his friends get turned into superheroes on a planet in another dimension by glowing green ooze. What's the secret of the ooze? Only Vanilla Ice knows, because he wrote the scripts. Nima Nurazada, director of such classic films as Project X. No, not that Project X. This Project X. What the fuck? 
Why do you have a boner? Oh I don't. God. It's just uh, it's my underwear like sitting funny. I talk shit for insane. Brings us a film starring Jesse Eisenberg and Kristen Stewart. No, not Adventureland. American Ultra. In this film, Eisenberg plays a stoner who is a secret CIA sleeper agent living in a podunk town in West Virginia. For no reason at all, Topher Grace, who plays a newly appointed CIA hotshot guy, wants to have him eliminated. I think deep down it's because he's secretly in love with Kristen Stewart, who is also a secret, secret agent pretending to be Eisenberg's girlfriend. Oh, spoilers. Check out the film! <laughs> uh, Susan, what did you think of American Ultra? <laughs> Two irritating kids go and spend a week at their grandparents' house while their white trash mom goes on a cruise with some guy who has a hairy chest, loves short stack pancakes, and is rapidly gaining weight. Who would have thought? a Walmart sales associate on the largest cruise ship in the world, getting drilled by some hairy guy. Jamaican-born director Balthasar Cormacher brings us the true life story of a bunch of climbers who got stuck up on Mount Everest and some of them died. Hi everyone, I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. And I'm Max Landis. And we're here with me. Oh, hi guys. Creed stars Michael B. Jordan as Adonis Creed, illegitimate son of the late Apollo Creed. In the film, Adonis begins a journey to follow in his dad's footsteps of becoming the best at getting repeatedly punched in the face, while also wanting to step out of his dad's shadow and become his own man that gets repeatedly punched in the face. To accomplish his goals, he seeks the guidance of Rocky Balboa, who trains Adonis using his wisdom of also getting repeatedly punched in the face. Victor Frankenstein stars Harry Potter, Professor Xavier, and another character from a movie that's an actor who's also in this. The film is a retelling of the classic Mary Shelley novel Frankenstein. This time, the story is told from the perspective of Igor, a character that is not in the classic Mary Shelley novel Frankenstein. The film shows the budding friendship between Igor and Dr. Frankenstein as they collaborate and make plans to reanimate dead tissue. They finally reanimate the monster in the last 10 minutes of the film. You know, the part of the story that's actually interesting. Krampus is the story of Max, a young boy that looks just like the other Max from that classic film, How I Saved the President. In this film, Max accidentally unleashes the demonic spirit Krampus onto his dysfunctional family on Christmas Eve. Who is Krampus, you ask? Why, he's the star of endless direct-to-video garbage films. Mike? What did you think of Krampens? Krampens? Why I have a Krampens in my leggings. Uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens is the new Star Wars. You know what this is. And we saw it. Mike, what did you think of Star Wars The Force Awakens? Well, I loved it. It was everything I hoped it would be. The Hateful Eight is the eighth film from Quentin Tarantino. Do you think he intentionally had his eighth film have the word eight in the title? The idea seems so masturbatory that it probably was done on purpose. The film takes place just after the Civil War when a bunch of different people get holed up in a cabin during a snowstorm. Because this is a Tarantino movie, we know that they are all exactly who they say they are and they'll get along just fine. So we also saw, kind of, uh, the Ridiculous Six. Kind of. Uh, I watched it all but the last 32 minutes. I had to watch it in like 16 viewings. Okay. The first three minutes felt like a half an hour. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> three minutes. I remember pausing it and I was like... I felt like I've been watching this for 10 minutes. Well, Why did you take a picture? It'll last longer. No! no. The Revenant is the new Alejandro Inarritu film. He's the guy who made last year's best picture film, Birdman. In this new movie, Leonardo DiCaprio plays Hugh Glass, an 1820s era fur trapper who gets raped by a bear, buried alive, and then vows revenge on Shinzon, who is played by Tom Hardy. This film is the latest entry into the human misery genre. So grab a date. Get your popcorn and settle in to watch a horse get disemboweled. 
Norm of the North. Dinner is served. Deadpool is a labor of love from world-renowned comic book expert Ryan Reynolds. The film tells the story of Wade Wilson, a guy who spends half the movie on a freeway overpass, explaining via flashbacks how he got on the overpass. The film also stars Marina Baccarin, T.J. Miller, and Ed Screen as supporting characters that stand around while Deadpool makes pop culture references in their faces. Hey everyone, remember the Spice Girls? 10 Cloverfield Lane stars John Goodman as Harry, I, I mean uh, Howard, and Mary Elizabeth Winstead as Nadine, I, I mean Michelle. And then some other guys also there. While it doesn't seem to be a sequel to Cloverfield, it does borrow its name for marketing purposes. From acclaimed writer-director Max Landis comes a film called Me, Him, and Her. Or Me, Him, Her. Shot in 2013, shelved, and then released on VOD this past Friday, Me, Him, Her is about the shocking truth of gay people in Hollywood. Life, love, lesbians, sword fights, shouting, and awkward extras propel this comedy into space! All this critic can say is, more Scott Bakula! Well, Jay, what did you think of me, him, her? <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> well, Mike, uh... It's finally time! It's finally here! Years of anticipating the most dark, loud, explosive, and longest movie ever. And now everyone can finally see it. You probably think I'm talking about miracles from heaven. But nope, I'm talking about Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, motherfuckers. Zack Snyder brings us another movie. Yes, punching, monsters, overacting, bad acting, explosions, a confusing plot. But who cares? You fill your face with popcorn, you dumb fat cows. Eat the slop before the slaughter, you fucking pigs. Batman v Superman, as Zack Snyder calls it, uh, is a film. Sir? Technically. Sir, ma'am, what, what did you think? Uh, what happened? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure what, I'm not entirely sure what happened. Hardcore Henry, or as I like to call it, Hardcore Headache, or Parkour Henry, you pick the clever alternate title, is the world's first POV action movie. Surprisingly, this was not based on a video game, but based on a music video. Will there be a video game soon? Could Hardcore Henry the game be the first video game based on a movie based on a music video? Who cares? All I know is I wish someone would shoot me. Reginald, what did you think of Hardcore Harry? Leisure Suit Larry? Green Room is the third feature film from Jeremy Saunier, the director of Murder Party and Blue Ruin. In this film, Anton Yelchin stars as a member of a punk rock band that gets in over their heads when they witness a murder backstage at a club run by violent skinheads. The leader of the skinhead organization is everyone's favorite bald guy, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart? Anton Yelchin? That's right, it's Chekhov versus Picard. We're getting those Star Trek references out of the way right up front, motherfucker. Captain America Civil War follows the lives of different mothers on Mother's Day. Sandy is happily divorced until she finds out her ex-husband eloped with a much younger woman. Now she must learn to deal with big changes in her life as her two boys now have a stepmom. Sisters Jesse and Gabby get an unexpected surprise from their mother, who is not happy to find out Gabby is a lesbian and Jesse is married to a man of color. Miranda doesn't have any kids and is focusing on her career. Kristen is enjoying life as a new mother, but is feeling pressure from her boyfriend to get married. Bradley is trying hard to be the best parent for his two girls since their mom passed away last year. However, his idea of Mother's Day is pretending it doesn't exist at all. X-Men Apocalypse is another X-Men movie about Professor X and Magneto not really agreeing with each other, Mystique being a loner misfit who does the right thing, and the rest of them learning to work as a team or something. Oscar Isaac is back with his greatest acting role since Poe Dameron as the titular villain Apocalypse, an ancient, all-powerful godlike mutant. Apocalypse wants to do something bad. I'm not quite sure what, 
but it's up to the X-Men to stop him. X-Men, look out, it's Apocalypse. Get ready, fans of cinema. Roland Emmerich is back with his newest film, Independence Day Retribution. Wait, that's Independence Day Retaliation. Wait, that's still not right. Independence Day Reconstitution. Independence Day Redemption. No, that's not it. Independence Day Revolution. Independence Day Revulsion. That's kind of cool. That's not right. Independence Day Repudiation. No. Independence Day Regulation. No. Independence Day Rectification. No. Independence Day Refraction. No. Independence Day Refortification. No. Independence Day Resurrection. No. Independence Day Reevaluation. Yeah. Yeah. Independence Day Refrigeration. Independence Day Ribbed for Her Pleasure. What? Fuck it. It's finally arrived. The most politically divisive film of the year. A fucking Ghostbusters remake. Guess that's where we're at. It's now time for a third Star Trek film. This time directed by Justin Lin of the Fast and Furious films. The crew of the Enterprise is back. A bad guy wants revenge. A doomsday device is there. Mr. Scott wrote the script. And there is no dog in the film. What? <laughs> is know. that a reference to anything? It's not a reference to anything. <laughs> oh my god, DC is back with another thing. This time it's called Suicide Squad, a film about all the executives at DC, F oh wait, sorry. With Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, DC has attempted to differentiate themselves from Marvel superhero films by adopting a dark, gritty, more realistic aesthetic. They continue to try and be different from Marvel with Suicide Squad by featuring a giant blue laser shooting up into the sky characters exchanging quippy dialogue, and a terrible villain with weak motivation who has an army of faceless henchmen for our heroes to kill endlessly with no moral qualms. Nothing like Marvel movies at all. The Joker, the most iconic villain in comic book history, shows up to have no relation or impact on the plot whatsoever. Thanks for nothing. Jay, what did you think of Suicide Squad? Um, why did you say that so sing-songy? I don't know. Stranger Things is an eight-episode series from Netflix. Set in Middle America in the early 80s, the show is about a young boy that goes missing in the woods. His friends search for him and instead find a mysterious young girl with a shaved head and telekinetic abilities. Also looking for the boy are his mother and the town's police chief. Mysteries abound in a tale that's part Spielberg, part Stephen King, part John Carpenter, and part every other movie you can possibly think of from the 80s. The show was created by the Duffer Brothers, who also wrote and directed the film Hidden, starring Alexander Skarsgård, which we have recommended multiple times on Half in the Bag. That's right, we liked the Duffer Brothers before it was cool, yo. Blair Witch is the latest film from director Adam, you know, Wingard. You know, 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 um, you know, you know, um, you know, you know, you know, uh, you know. In the film, a group of young people venture out into the vast forest in Burkittsville, Maryland, to make a documentary about the myths and legends of the Blair Witch. You know, you know, kind of like what happened in the Blair Witch Project. Exactly like what happened in the Blair Witch Project. Don't Breathe is a film about a group of low-level thugs that break into an elderly blind man's house to steal his fortune. Little do these dimwits realize that this old blind man is some kind of ex-marine or army guy or whatever, and he possesses superhuman abilities to sense when someone is near him, except for when he can't do that, which is about half the time. If you ever wanted to watch a film that was a perfect blend of Star Wars, the Matrix, Inception, Iron Man, Batman Begins, Big Trouble in Little China, The Last Airbender, and Dr. House MD, then boo, a Medea Halloween is the movie for you. 
If you wanted to see a different film altogether, then check out Marvel's Doctor Strange. In this new literal expansion of the Marvel Multiverse Universe, Eggs Benedict Cabbage Patch plays Doctor Strange, a man that can do anything by channeling powers from the universe. He learned this power from reading books and practice. He went to Hong Kong to try to cure his busted up hands, but ended up becoming a space magician battling some dudes who wanted to bring another space god to Earth to become immortal. Oh, and I guess he was also in love with Rachel McAdams, because if he was just doing magic with a bunch of dudes, he'd be Dr. Queer, not Dr. Strange. <laughs> Well, Mike, who would have thought that going from a room to a whole house would have been such a step down for Jacob Tremblay? That's right, Jay. Our first film is called Shut In, which was changed from its original French-Canadian title of The Most Boringest Film Ever Made. Is it possible for a film to fail on every level? Yes! Apparently it is! From the director of such hit films as Hammer of the Gods and and the writer of such hit films as... Naomi Watts travels to Quebec for a free vacation to ski, do some light shopping, and then occasionally phone in a performance in some shitty horror film. She plays a psychologist taking care of her 18-year-old invalid son, but also thinks a deaf boy is hiding in her closet. What a story! Amy McRachel McAdams plays a language expert who is called upon by the U.S. government to talk to aliens. Her mission is simple. See what they want. Jeremy Renner shows up to play a super smart scientist man to help out. Finally, it's the Marvel DC crossover film we've been waiting for. Oh wait, that already happened. Ah, is up to fuck it! Let's just talk about Rogue One! X-Wings! Death Star! Grand Moff Tarkin! TIE Fighters! Mon Mothma's back! Princess Leia! Admiral Akbar! Oh, no, 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 that was somebody else. That was a different Mon Calamari. Oh, I thought they cast the same actor and he just gained a bunch of weight between the last film oh. and this one. Oh, no, Admiral Akbar's not a real person. Alderaan! <laughs> Adat Walkers! We go back to Yavin 4. Remember the Rebel base? I clapped. I clapped when I saw it. I clapped when I saw Darth Vader. ATSTs, ATSTs. Lucasfilm logo. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, but no title crawl. Oh, well. I applauded it for being different. It broke new ground. <laughs> <laughs> TIE Fighters as well as X-Wing! You'll be dead guy! And Pundu Boo Boo! Panda Babu! You mean butt face? Lightsaber! Jimmy Smiths! Basil Oregano, played by Jimmy Smiths! He's Princess Leia's non-biological father! He got blown up on Alderaan! Alderaan! That's the planet that gets blown up! ATSTs, ATSTs! C3PO and R2D2 showed up and I clapped! I clapped when I saw them too! I clapped because I know Star Wars! I know what that is! This is Gold Leader, we're starting for the target shaft now! Grandma Tarkin! Lightsaber! Blue Milk! Lightsaber! Star! Destroyers, I'm gonna come! Did you clap at any of the new moments and memorable characters? Were there any? No! I clap when Darth Vader turned on his red lightsaber. Holy shit, there was a red lightsaber and he used the force! Oh my god! It's finally here, the beginning of the end of your life. A new day has dawned. One in which we get a new Star Wars film, or two, every year until we're all dead. The first one is called Rogue One. Do you remember things that were in Star Wars? Me too! Felicity Jones stars as Jin Erso. Diego Luna stars as Calrissian Andorian. Moblon Morpon stars as Guvan Dupan. Plegnon Famvon stars as Blam Supplebutt. 
John Quinn Blabo stars as Zorgla Fam Blacken. <laughs> Endless trash! From the director of Whiplash comes another one of his shitty movies. Just give up already, Yui Bull. Your movies suck! This latest film is a musical comedy drama starring Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone as people trying to make it in Los Angeles. Hey, genius! Guess what? They already did make it. Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone have been in a ton of movies. What are you, stupid? From the acclaimed director of Snoop Dogg's Hood of Horror, which is a real movie apparently, comes The Bye Bye Man, a new horror film that's the cinematic equivalent of a dumpster fire. For no reason at all, if you say the name Bye Bye Man, he'll come to kill you and anyone you tell the name to. So don't think it, don't say it. This guy must work a lot of overtime. Also, he has a dog creature that wandered in from the theater next door playing the latest Resident Evil film. From the mind of Jordan Peele, one half of the comedy duo Key and Peele, comes a new horror film called Get Out. No, it's not about ghosts, but it's just as scary and real. Cause Mike thinks ghosts are real. Cause they are. No, this film is about a black guy named Chris who is dating a white girl named Rose. They are heading to meet her parents in an affluent suburb somewhere. Chris soon discovers something strange is going on. You've seen the trailer, why am I talking? Mike, what did you think of Get Out? Get Out! All good things must come to an end. And so it goes with Hugh Jackman's final performance as Wolverine in this very uncomic book, comic book movie. So much misery, death, shooting, fighting, and senile psychic accidents for this critic to handle. I give Wolverine an F. Jay, what you think of Wolverine? Hey Jay, what did you think of Logan? What? Life is a new sci-fi thriller starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Ryan Reynolds, and other people I don't know. Jessica Chastain? Idris Elba? I don't know. I don't know who they were. It's all about astronauts aboard the International Space Station that collect a sample of dirt from Mars. And somehow it has a frozen or dead piece of amoeba in it, or a microbe. Then they turn it alive and it kills everyone because it's a weird alien. Hold on for an exciting film. You know, our first episode is only 10 minutes long. <laughs> All right. Here, you read the next one. It's the top line. <clears throat> that's, that's what I wrote. Power Rangers, a.k.a. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, is a movie. Everyone's favorite heroes are back. The Guardians of the Galaxy? Nope. Marvel fanboy shills Mike and Jay. Witness their amazing powers of liking a movie that's fun and likable. Marvel at their ability to do nothing but hate on DC while sucking Marvel's dick. Be amazed that they seem to enjoy movies sometimes that are enjoyable while disliking other movies that are a huge fucking mess. It's time for Guardians of the Galaxies Volume 2. Finally, someone explained what the black goo was with one simple sentence. Thanks, David. Hi, and welcome to Alien Covenant, the new film from elderly director Ridley Scott. They were going to let Neil Blomkamp direct Alien movies, but then Ridley Scott wanted to redeem himself after no one liked Prometheus. Now he made this, and it was less weird and had things people know in it, like an alien on a spaceship. So now people like him again and forgive him for letting Damon Lindelof write a script. Look out, it's a xenomorph. Mike, Mike, did you hear the big news? Oh my God, you're pregnant? Yeah, but bigger than that. Oh my God, um, there was a celebrity divorce? Bigger. Bigger than that. Um, a major or minor celebrity has died, either expectedly or unexpectedly? 
Probably, but just let me tell you the news. Okay! DC has made a film that apparently isn't terrible. What? Oh my! <laughs> Jesus Christ! How could that be true? What movie is it? Wonder Woman! What? Come on, let's go see it! Oh my god! Fuck it! Let's go see this movie! It's gonna be wonderful! Feminism, stereotypes, political awareness, misandry, misogyny, feminazi, proto-feminism, mansplaining, heteronarrative, empowering feminist topicality. These are terms we can now associate with a fun superhero movie today. Thanks, world! Why, it's Wonder Woman! Finally, in this hopeless age of Trump, little girls have someone they can look up to. Forget their own mothers, physicist Marie Curie, Mae Jemison, Harriet Tubman, Margaret Thatcher, Rosa Parks, Susan B. Anthony, Hillary Clinton, and even fucking Cleopatra. Finally, little girls and grown women all over the world can look up to a fictional Amazon princess with a magic whip who stars in a movie no one will remember in two weeks. Well, with all that out of the way now, Jay, why don't you tell me what you thought of Wonder Woman? It was pretty good. I thought the same thing. It was pretty good. Yeah. The Mummy is the first and last entry in Universal's Dark Universe Cinematic Universe, or the UDUCU for short. It stars Tom Cruise as a confused elderly man who seems unaware what movie he's in, who uncovers an ancient tomb that unleashes Sofia Boutella as a soul-sucking mummy. At last, cinema now has that sexy mummy that we've all been clamoring for. The movie co-stars Russell Crowe, Jake Johnson as Griffin Dunn, and a blonde woman who will work for scale. Baby Driver stars Ansel Elgort. And no, his name is not an anagram, nor is it a Star Wars character. That's his name! Baby Driver is a coming-of-age heist movie with lots of music, action, and angry John Hamm. Let's talk about Baba Drava, as it's known in France. The third time's the charm. That's what Sony would be saying if they wanted to remind the world about the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies, but those don't exist anymore. Neither does Tobey Maguire. And I'm not talking about his Spider-Man movies, I'm talking about Tobey Maguire. The very first Spider-Man movie ever is out now. It stars Tom Hollandaise as Peter Parker, who attends a high school with so much diversity college advertising pamphlets are jealous. Spider-Man must take down Michael Keaton, who is playing a character called the Vulture, from stealing alien technology and making weapons to sell to bad guys. That's the movie! Well, Jay, I think we're finally caught up with dismissively reviewing all the big summer movies. Oh, great! Hey, do you want to talk extensively about the Annabelle prequel? Finally, it's here! Annabelle creation. Nothing makes me think of scary movies more than mid-August. From the director of Lights Out, David F. Sandberg, we finally have the prequel backstory to the Annabelle doll we've all been waiting for. Wait, didn't we already see that? Yes, but this is a prequel to that sequel prequel. Boo! Prepare to be bored. I mean, scared. As many things will happen in this film from the start to the end. I'm so scared. In Blade Runner 2049, a dark force threatens Ponyville and the main six, Twilight Sparkle, Applejack, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy and Rarity embark on an unforgettable journey beyond Exquisiteria, where they meet new friends and exciting challenges on a quest to use the magic of friendship to save their home. Hey kids, it's more Marvel movie time. Thor Ragnarok is about two hours and ten minutes long. Thor is doing some things, gets caught up in some kind of misadventure, and then has to stop a bad villain from doing a bad thing. Next. Well, 
Everybody, we're here again to talk about the next film in the series of endless Marvel films called Thor... Justice League. Oh. oh. What was it called? Thor Ragnarok. It's that time of the week again. Another superhero movie. This time it's the long-awaited Justice League. A movie plagued with as many problems as it is flying demon bugs. Zack Snyder presents, along with reshoots by Joss Whedon, a mess bigger than the one left by Hurricane Whatever. In this first team-up film since Batman v Superman, Batman realizes a bad guy from a video game is on Earth to get three glowing MacGuffins. When they are put together, it'll open a portal to something bad or something. Now, Batman must conveniently find like six or seven superheroes to fight this bad guy or whatever. The Disaster Artist is a movie about an eccentric weirdo outsider that writes and directs his own film, which turns out to be one of the worst movies of all time. You know, kind of like Ed Wood. Just without all the heart, style, memorable characters, charm, or wit. That's all by... Damn, that's cold! <laughs> It's finally here, the cinematic equivalent of Homer Simpson's makeup shotgun. It's Star Wars, The Last Jedi. Seemingly endless action, no time to stop for anything. So many vistas, animals and robots, endless death. Ryan Johnson is the undertaker of Star Wars. He put it in a grave, or so the internet says. The film was simply delightful, or was it? Shazam! Razzmatazz! Super Bowl! I mean, the big game! Marketing scams! It's time to talk about the new film, The Cloverfield Paradox. Ever wonder how a large Godzilla monster came to Earth in a previous film? No! Neither did I! Hi, I'm Red Letter Media, and today we're talking about a group of characters from Earth on a space station trying to turn on a machine to create a power source for an Earth that's running out of energy and on the brink of war. Sound interesting? Well, it's not! It's a big and bold change of focus in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Black Panther pushes past many of the cliched plot devices, archetypes, and formulas of standard comic book blockbusters. This film is a giant middle finger to all things authoritarian. It's taken a decade and 18 films, but the Marvel Cinematic Universe has finally produced a superhero movie that feels like it was ripped from the pages of a comic book. After 18 films, finally they did it! Black Panther is one of the best superhero movies of the century. And we're only 18 years in, folks! They will write about this movie and make videos about it. It will be discussed among friends of all ages, all races, all shapes and sizes. It will be taught in school, debated among intellectuals. It will be seen as the moment everything changed. Well, Jay, that intro was not written by us. It was a lot of excerpts from reviews of the film Black Panther, one of the best reviewed films in the history of cinema. So I gotta ask you, Jay, what did you think of Black Panther? It's all right. Annihilation is the new film from writer-director Alex Garland, whose last film was Ex Machina. You know, one of the best science fiction films in forever. Annihilation isn't a reboot or a remake, and it's not based on a comic book. It's based on a book, but not a fucking comic book. It's slow and tense and intelligent and doesn't treat its audience like idiots. Nobody went to see it. <laughs> Mike, what episode of Star Trek did Annihilation remind you of? It's here. The movie Jay has literally been waiting years to see. It's Zach Baggins' Demon House. A documentary about a house possessed by a hundred demons, which is the least scariest thing in Gary, Indiana. Well, it's time for Ready Player One, the movie directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, that the Huffington Post says is delightful. The Grown Ups Harry Potter. What? The, the, that's, these are reviews from the book. 
Oh, okay. As one adventure leads expertly to the next, the time time simply evaporates. The Entertainment Weekly. And I'm not sure what the reviews are of the movie. I said, we're, we're, we're going? I'm we're, still doing the voiceover. Oh. And I'm not sure what the reviews of the movie are. I think it's doing well. What terrible idea we got next? What's a title that all the kids will recognize, relate to, and get conned by? Why, it's Truth or Dare! From the acclaimed filmmaker that brought you True Memoirs of an International Assassin, starring Kevin James. And nothing else. No other films. <laughs> Truth or Dare tells the pointless story about college students on spring break trip to Mexico. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Jay! Truth or Dare. Why did we watch this? I hate you. <laughs> Shh! It's time to talk about A Quiet Place. A new horror film from director John Krasinski and soon-to-be ex-wife Emily Blunt. This condescending Hollywood power couple plays a husband and wife trying to raise kids in a post-apocalyptic world where mysterious creatures hunt them by sound. Part tremors, part memoirs of an international assassin, this film is all scary. The newest Avengers movie is here! This one is called Infinity War. The jokes about the movie being really long practically write themselves. Look out, Avengers! Thanos is coming! The villain we've been told we're supposed to be anticipating for the last 10 years, despite never being given any reason to do so. But he's here! And he's going to destroy half the galaxy with his magical golden oven mitt. Can the Avengers stop him? You'll just have to see the movie, and then wait another year to see the next movie to find out! Solo, a Star Wars story, is a film that just came out, directed by Ron Howard and also sort of directed by Lord and Miller, the guys that made the Lego movie, made a Han Solo movie, but it was deemed too silly and bizarre and had too many ad-libs and went over budget and was out of control. So Kathleen Kennedy fired them and Ron Howard took over to make it more boring. And then they finished the movie and a bunch of critics went to the screenings and were paid off to give it positive reviews. <laughs> and then when it came out, it tanked uh, in the box office and the audience reviews went through the floor into the negatives and nobody liked it and a whole bunch of people killed themselves over it. Check it out! <laughs> it's time again for the most horrifying film ever made! The film that made people faint at Cannes and Sundance, which had nothing to do with the bad clams they were served before the screening. <laughs> Why, it's heredity! Hereditary, hereditary. Jurassic Park 5, AKA Jurassic World 2, AKA Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom is finally here. In this fifth Jurassic Park installment, which is a sequel to the soft reboot of Jurassic Park called Jurassic World, Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom is a soft reboot itself of Jurassic Park 2 The Lost World. This film, which was not directed by Colin Trevorrow, reunites us with Bryce Dallas Howard's character, Lady from the Last Movie, and Chris Pratt's character, Owen Thunderguns. In this film, the white cis male, his complicit characterless female love interest, and two comic relief diversity hires go back to the island as Lanublar in order to save some dinosaurs from an exploding volcano. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Slenderman. The new film based on something someone made up on the internet. Four high school girls summon the Slenderman to do something. Uh, they summon him by watching a video on the internet. From a message board, from the dark web. Woo! It's the dark web because everything is dark and colored black. It's the dark web! That's where you find Slenderman! In my opinion, stick to creepy pasta. And yes, I am talking about Olive Garden. Da -dun 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 -dun. Boy, Mike, we should look into getting the air conditioning fixed here. I'm sweating more than the producers of Slenderman when they saw this weekend's box office results. <laughs> Wait, there were results? Mandy breaks new ground by being the first film ever to be shot entirely on location inside of Satan's butthole. In the film, Nicolas Cage acts. Remember RoboCop 2014? Remember Total Recall 2012? Remember The Terminator, Salvation, and Genesis? Oh, that was just an unrelated sentence. 
has nothing to do with what follows. It's time for the soft slash hard reboot of Predator called, get ready, the Predator! We thought we were in good hands with Shane Black behind the wheel, but it turns out he was drunk. Also, the car had no steering wheel or brakes. In the sequel slash reboot, Predators are coming and going to Earth with a mission of not being Predators. Remember the Predator? So Jay, what did you think of the Predator? I mean, Predator, Pred Predator. Oh, are we talking about that actor that got cut out of the movie? No, I just bespoke. I oh, just, I oh. just said, I said Predator. Uh, that's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It just came out funny. Mm. So did this movie. <laughs> Halloween is the sequel to Halloween, but not the sequel to Halloween. Technically, it's Halloween 2, but ignores the events of Halloween 2 and Halloween 2. It's the first Halloween film to bring back Jamie Lee Curtis, except for Halloween 2, Halloween 7, and Halloween 8. But finally, the series has brought back John Carpenter in some capacity for the first time except for Halloween 2 and Halloween 3. It's also the first Halloween film to ignore the previous films in the franchise's timeline, except for Halloween 3, Halloween 4, which ignores Halloween 3, Halloween 7, which ignores Halloween 3, Halloween 4, Halloween 5, and Halloween 6. But aside from all that, it's a totally fresh and new start for the Halloween franchise. Only you could have written that. <laughs> <laughs> Netflix presents The Haunting of Hill House, a short-run TV series based on the 1959 gothic horror novel of the same name. Hey, why are Mike and Jay talking about a TV show? Why aren't they talking about the TV show that I wanted them to talk about? Why are they talking about this TV show? Talk about the movie that I want them to talk about. Why are you talking about this? Talk about something else. Talk about the thing that I want you to talk about. Here's a tweet. Talk about the fucking Freddie Mercury movie. Here's another tweet. Talk about Westworld. Here's another tweet. Talk about a thing that I want you to talk about. Anyway, wait! Is this a TV show or just a really, really, really long movie? Who cares? Eat my ass! Bam! It's Overlord! From director Julius Avery, a director of one other movie, comes the most tastefully done film about Nazi zombies ever made. A group of soldiers drop into France ahead of D-Day to take out a radio jamming tower and discover something terrible. Nazis are creating super soldier zombies! Hot damn, look out! <laughs> From the director of The Conjuring, James Wan, comes his most frightening film to date, Aquaman. Jason Mimosa, Amber Heard, Nicole Kidman, Patrick Wilson, Dolph Lundgren, and Willem Dafoe round out the cast of people that look like they have no idea what's going on around them. Why it's a spectacle of fish magic, bad acting, sharks, tidal waves, bad acting, CGI water hair, and embarrassing costumes that all fit snugly into a boilerplate plot about a merman becoming a king or something. Take Thor, Lord of the Rings, Black Panther, and Splash! Put them in a blender, then just add water, no pun intended, and voila! You've got mail! Netflix presents Bird Box. It's the movie premise equivalent to the horror jump scare. Sandra Bollock stars as a pregnant lady who has a baby, then adopts another baby to take care of, all the while dealing with not looking at something evil or it makes you crazy, or it makes you kill yourself, or makes insane people sane but bad? Either way, a whole bunch of people act scared, crazy, or annoying. All while Sandra Bollock acts her way through the movie while loaded up on Valium. Eat shit and die, Netflix! <laughs> what are you laughing at? Why do you laugh so much? M. Night Shyamalan's new film, Glass, proved to be a split decision with critics and moviegoers. However, it's doubtful it can top The Sixth Sense's unbreakable box office record. If you've seen the film, you don't need a description. If you've seen the trailer, you get the premise. If you haven't seen the film or the trailer, then why are you watching a review for a movie you know nothing about? Peace out, bye! Despite being the blandest movie ever, Captain Marvel is a lot of things to a lot of people. It's the movie Rotten Tomatoes doesn't want anyone to have an opinion on. The movie dumb bearded white guys are protesting. They're so scared of people actually calling this movie out for what it is, which is feminist propaganda. Now I haven't seen it, 
The movie other dumb bearded white guys are white knighting. The movie Brie Larson doesn't want us to see. I do not need a 40 year old white dude. I don't hate white dudes. Am I saying that I hate white dudes? No. The movie that inspired a ton of cheap clickbait articles from terrible online journalists who have no idea how Rotten Tomatoes works. The movie easily manipulated Twitter-obsessed weirdos have given a ton of free publicity to by convincing themselves this corporate product is a feminist cause. The movie that had charities started for it in order for underprivileged little girls to be able to see, which benefits absolutely nobody but Disney. Buy these fucking poor kids some food instead, you fuckers! It's Captain Marvel! If the movie is a hit, it's because society has become enlightened enough to celebrate a female-led action movie. Finally! If the movie is a flop, it's because of toxic online trolls. Finally! No other explanations exist! Eat the multi-billion dollar corporate slop and pretend it's social justice, you weirdos! Thanks for making the world an embarrassing nightmare, everyone. <laughs> Paddleton is a movie you haven't seen. It's on Netflix, along with a bunch of other movies that they drop on there and don't tell you about and you don't know exists. Until one of your coworkers says, hey, did you see Paddleton? And you say, I've never even heard of that. Is it in the theaters? And they say, no, it's on Netflix. And you say, oh, where on Netflix? I don't see it in any of the thumbnails. All I see is The Office, over and over and over. And it's about a guy dying of cancer. Welcome to our comedy review show, Paddleton. Us. Not to be confused with This Is Us, which is equally as frightening, is a new horror film from Key and Peel. Wait, I mean the cinematic genius mind of Jordan Peel, who also brought you Get Out. And we'll be bringing you a reboot of The Twilight Zone, starting on April 1st. And that's not an April Fool's Day joke. In Us, a family travels to Santa something or other in Cala or whatever to go on a vacation and to a beach and discover that they have evil doppelgangers of themselves. A whole bunch of strange, gory, and scary shit happens that I can't really talk about until we get past spoilers. But suffice it to say, despite all of its originality, scares, and great performances, Us is no Captain Marvel. <laughs> Forget David Ayer. Forget Zack Snyder. Leave it to the guy who made Lights Out and Annabelle Creation to rejuvenate the DC Cinematic Universe. Shazam is possibly the worst looking, corniest, lamest superhero ever. It's literally magic that this movie turned out to be one of the better superhero movies of the last 10 years. Or is it witchcraft? Ooh. Ad break. Ad break. Thanos Part 2 chronicles the further adventures of Thanos, a purple nutsack man that tried to do the universe a favor by wiping out half of the population. Some ingrates in silly costumes tried to stop him for some reason. What a bunch of assholes. What a bunch of a-holes. Bring on the mass genocide, Daddy Thanos. All we're doing with our time here anyway is posting pictures of tacos and shit on Instagram. <laughs> what do you get when you combine David Lynch, Thomas Pynchon, Alfred Hitchcock by way of Brian De Palma, and more plot threads than Avengers Endgame? You get Under the Silver Lake, a movie so baffling that even the marketing geniuses at A24 didn't know what to do with it. And they sold people on It Comes at Night. A movie that's just 90 minutes of people trying to figure out who opened a door. Under the Silver Lake stars one of the prettiest actresses to grace the silver screen, Andrew Garfield. Godzilla, King of the Monsters is the sequel to the last Godzilla movie. No, not that one. The one before that one. The only recent one that matters because it's American and we invented Godzilla, damn it. King of the Monsters is about Godzilla fighting a bunch of other monsters. Some boring human characters do some boring human stuff too while Godzilla is busy fighting a bunch of other monsters. The worst summer season for movies is officially underway, and adding to the pile is the poorly reviewed Dark Phoenix. The third or fourth time the tale of Jean Grey going bonkers has been told. Throw in some themes of us versus them, family, teacher-student, love-hate, 
revenge, and you've got drama to the nth degree, complete with a blue ape. What movie couldn't use more blue apes? X-Men Dark Phoenix is the best looking TV show to ever play in the movie theaters. From the producers of IT, it's the Child's Play reboot. And this movie proves that no one's ever really gone, especially Chucky. I'll be back. I always come back. 150 years after the first Child's Play film and 34 subsequent sequels, we finally get the reboot that no one asked for. Child's Play tells the story of April Ludgate and her stupid son who live in a nasty apartment and have a buddy doll that goes bonkers and kills people. Uh, at least the trailers were good. It's a trailer for Star Trek Picard. A squeeze, yeah, 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 so much.